Hello everyone. Today I'll be speaking on MR appearance of anterior cruciate ligament tears. ACL is the most common knee ligament injury encountered in radiology and orthopedic practices. An MRI as a modality characterizes the spectrum of morphologic changes and signal int intensity changes in ACL tears. Normally, an ACL looks like a low band of signal intensity traversing from the femoral end to the tibial end, either seen totally in one single slice or in multiple slices, depending on the obliquity of the scanning done. Before we go into tear proper, a few important landmarks. The Blumensat line courses parallel to the roof of the intercondylar notch along the posterior surface of the femur. The Blumensat angle is formed by this Blumensat line and a line along the margin including the distal portion of the ACL. A negative or a normal Blumensat angle occurs when the apex of the angle is directed superiorly as we see here in a normal ACL. Whereas a positive or abnormal Blumensat angle occurs when the apex of the angle is directed inferiorly. Another thing we have to remember, the ACL normally hugs the lateral wall of the femoral notch in the lateral femoral condyle. It is very important to know that ACL tear has to be read in all sequences, coronal, sagittal, axial planes to give a complete idea about the ACL tear. Coming to mechanism of injury, basically ACL tears form a very important component of sports injuries. They may be due to pivot shift injury where there is a valgus load, flexion and external rotation of the tibia, commonly associated with ACL rupture and lateral compartment contusions. They may be due to dashboard injury where force is applied anterior to the anterior proximal tibia with knee inflection. And finally, a hyperextension injury where direct force is applied to the anterior tibia with a planted foot. Classically, the kissing contusions of the anterior femoral condyle anterior tibial plateau are seen in hyperextension injuries. Coming to grading of tear. There are basically three grades. We call it a grade 1 injury when there is intraligamentous injury with an edematous ACL, no change in ligament length because the fibers are intact. In a grade 2 tear, there is intraligamentous injury with a change in ligament length. Usually, there are partial tears. And finally, grade 3 tears is when we call it and we see a complete ligamentous disruption. This is an edematous ACL, an example of a grade 1 ACL tear. A grade 2 ACL tear where there is partial tear as we see the anterolateral bundle, a few fibers are torn, detached from the tibial attachment site. And finally, here there is complete disruption of the ACL as seen. So, when we call types of tear, we can describe the ACL tears as acute, hyperacute, chronic, depending on the chronicity. It can be a partial tear, it can be a complete tear, or it can be an avulsion tear either from the femoral attachment or the tibial attachment. Now coming to the MRI signs of ACL tear. Primary signs of ACL tear are basically three. Abnormal signal, abnormal course, and ligament discontinuity. Here we see abnormal signal of the ACL, abnormal ligamentous course and disruption of fibers as we see here a mid substance tear with complete disruption fibers seem very nice in the PD non-fat sat images. Coming to the secondary signs, the secondary signs of ACL tear are Bone contusions, now depending as I had told you earlier, depending on the mechanism of injury, the contusion pattern will differ. Either it can be lateral compartment osseous contusions only affecting the posterolateral tibial plateau, most specific, or it can be posteromedial tibial plateau and lateral femoral condyle contusion. Lateral femoral condyle contusions are associated with depression of the lateral sulcus terminalis. As seen very nicely here, a depressed sulcus terminalis of the lateral femoral condyle. 
Other secondary signs are anterior tibial translation, assessed in the lateral aspect of the lateral compartment, more than 7 millimeters, buckled PCL, abnormal angulation of the PCL because of the lax ACL, and uncovered posterior horn of lateral meniscus. A few examples of chronic ACL tear. We call it a chronic ACL tear when the acute signs like bone contusion, pericruciate edema has subsided. The torn ACL is seen as an attenuated ACL. The, the remaining ACL looks pretty attenuated because of the chronicity of the disease. Coming to partial tears, the partial tears usually are seen as partial tear of the anteromedial bundle, as we see in this case. A posterolateral bundle tears, on the other hand, has to be seen in all imaging planes. This is a, a case of posterolateral bundle tear where we see a gap between the dark signal intensity of the ACL and the lateral femoral condyle. This is called a gap sign. Normally, there is supposed to be no gap and the uh, ACL is supposed to completely hug the lateral femoral condyle. Another sign is what is called the fingerprint signs. Norm normally, the tibial attachment is supposed to span along the entire area of the interspinous region of the tibial attachment. But if we find a gap in the lateral aspect, that kind of indicates a posterolateral bundle tear and often known as the fingerprint sign. A little about mucoid degeneration of ACL. The ACL, due to degeneration, takes an appearance like this with a celery stalk appearance, often associated with ganglion cysts. We have to take a history of an injury and we should not mistake an, a mucoid degeneration ACL for an intrasubstance tear. In short, about ACL stumps. ACL stumps are usually of two types. A type 1 stump is when the displaced ACL after tear falls as a nodular mass in the anterior aspect of the intercondylar notch. Whereas type 2 ACL stumps demonstrate a discrete well-defined tongue-like extension of the stump associated with angulation. The longer the ACL after tearing depends on that, the type of stump. That means in case of type 2 stumps, the tear is more towards the femoral attachment leading to a longer length of the stump so that it has the capacity of angulating and falling anteriorly. We have to remember one thing, the type 1 stumps often are associated with fibrosis at the free end of the stump creating a bulbous configuration susceptible to anterior recess entrapment forming what is called the cyclops lesion. This is the importance of the stumps. ACL evulsions may be either a femoral evulsion, which are usually not associated with any bony evulsion, whereas the tibial attachment evulsions are often associated with tibial eminence fracture with a fractured fragment lifted up along with the ACL. So to conclude, MRI for ACL tears have 90.9% .9 sensitivity, 84.6% specificity, which indicates that it is a very good modality to rule out ACL tears. Radiologists can give a very clear depiction of the characteristic of the ACL tear, the type of the tear, the chronicity. Basically, we have to remember that ACL tear is a clinical diagnosis. What the orthopedic surgeon wants from the radiologist is to confirm or document the tear, give an idea about the chronicity of the tear and also to look for any other associated injuries, for example, meniscal tears, medial collateral ligament tears and thus give a clear picture of this internal derangement of the knee. Thank you.